Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back. I am Victor, and I am here to talk to you about the general instruction of the Liturgy of the Hours. If this is your first time watching, the general instruction on the Liturgy of the Hours is a theological document uh, written by the Magisterium of the Catholic Church as a way to understand the spirituality behind the official prayer of the Catholic Church known as the Liturgy of the Hours. Hours, And it is a prayer book that is uh, full of psalms and scripture readings to be prayed at different times of the day in order to keep uh, the mind focused on God at all times. All right, we last time we met, we left off at, I believe, paragraph 7. So I'll read that one more time to review, and then I'll work my way all the way to the end of the section because I am at the end of my Christmas holiday, and I may not have much time to make videos as profusely as I am now. So here we go. A close and special bond exists between Christ and those whom, through the sacrament of regeneration... He makes members of his body the church. All the riches belonging to the Son flow from him as from the head into the whole body. The pouring out of the Spirit, truth, life, and a share in his divine sonship, which he revealed to us in all his prayer on earth. Okay, so last time we we, we met, if you happen to be watching this series, I know I, know I only have about two views, so all two of you, uh, the last time we left off, we confirmed, at least from this document, that um, Christ is the head of the entire Christian community, and that any time a Christian prays, it is the Holy Spirit praying through him, with him, and is being prayed to through Christ the High Priest. Now, that doesn't make much sense. How, how do you visualize something like that? Well, um, the act of visualizing it, the act of trying to understand it, is part of the operation of grace. Okay, Jesus is alive. Jesus is in a human or resurrected glorified body, which is not limited to time and space. And it's all through the action of the Holy Spirit and by the creative action of the Father. So it's all Trinitarian. It's all connected. Um, and so when we pray, we enter into that Trinitarian uh, life. Okay, let's go on. The whole body of the church shares in the priesthood of Christ, the baptized by regeneration and the anointing of the Holy Spirit are consecrated into a spiritual house and a holy priesthood that's taken directly from the letter of St. Peter. They become capable of taking part in the worship of the New Testament, not thanks to themselves, but to the gift and merits of Christ. Now here we reach a good explanation as to why the, the worship services or the liturgies of the Catholic Church and the Orthodox, which trace their history back to the Apostles, um, why it tends to be less entertainment and more prayer and worship. Um, not in the sense of praise and worship in our uh, Protestant churches, but in the Catholic and Orthodox churches, we see much more ritual much more um, contemplation and in the Catholic Church it was much more so before Vatican II before the abuses of Vatican II which hopefully will end soon um, but that's a whole other series um, um, by the way I'm not anti-Vatican II I just I'm, I, I'm sad about the things that have been done uh, to Vatican II but uh, it's to be expected anytime the Holy Spirit works Satan's always there to try to ruin it so uh, thankfully, we have the Liturgy of the Hours, which is a product of Vatican II and another reason to celebrate Vatican II. So anyway, what is it saying here? It's saying that the whole body, all the Christian people, people who are baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, share in the priesthood of Christ. Can you believe that? We are priests of the new kingdom, of the new covenant. Now, why aren't we going out celebrating Mass or opening up churches? Well, the reason is, pay attention, is because... Now that we are a holy priesthood, we have been given divine authority to participate in that worship of the new covenant. We have been given the anointing, which gives us access to worshiping Christ in the new covenant. 
just the way in the Old Testament only certain priests were able to enter the, the Holy of Holies, the most sacred spot in the, the Jerusalem Temple, we have been given access to the Holiest of Holies, who is Jesus Christ, in the Eucharist and in his uh, resurrected body. Um, so this is a big deal. And this is why um, unbaptized or people who aren't baptized Catholic cannot receive communion because how can you say you are part of the holy priesthood of the new covenant if you're not even baptized into uh, his church? Um, yeah, we are set, we are united by baptism and that's a common fact. And we are, the Holy Spirit is gradually bringing us back to full unity. I'm all about bringing everybody back to one church. Um, but the church is, the Catholic Church is trying to preserve whatever unity it has left after all the divisions that took place. So um, when, when you go to Mass, you are fulfilling a priestly role. You are celebrating with the priest. Uh, the, the, the priest at the altar is just a minister who's chosen and ordained to lead that um, group priestly worship. Um, but uh, that's why it's very important to go to Mass and very important to understand the Mass, understand the liturgy, because you're taking part in the exact same worship that's going on in heaven, but under the appearance of symbols, like candles and altars and things like that. And it's a big deal. The more you appreciate that, the more you'll see and feel what's actually going on. It's a very powerful feeling. It'll make you want to go to Mass every day. But thankfully, we have the Liturgy of the Hours, which brings the prayers and the spirit of the liturgy into daily life. Because daily life should be a liturgy. Daily life should be a, a worship service. should be Mass. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's finish this up. I don't want to go on for too long. Um, I have... Oh good. I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes, so let's go on. God could give men no greater gift than to make His Word, capital W, through whom He created all things, their head. That they in turn should become His members. The Son of God has become the Son of Man, one with the Father, one man with men. So that when we ask, when we speak to God in prayer, the Son is not separated from the Father. When the body of the Son prays, the head is not separated from the body. It is the one Savior of His body, our Lord Jesus Christ, who prays for us, prays in us, and is prayed to by us. He prays for us as our priest, he prays in us as our head, he is prayed to by us as our God. Let us recognize, therefore, our voices in him and his voice in us. Christian prayer draws its dignity from its sharing in the filial relationship of the only begotten Son to the Father. The prayer he expressed in his earthly life with his own words, in the name of and for the salvation of the entire human race, he continues to address to the, his Father in the whole church and in all her members. And if you read the, the letter to the Hebrews, this is all basically just um, a paraphrasing of the teachings uh, on the high priesthood of Jesus Christ. And the fact that we share in that priesthood is pretty darn amazing. Um, something to be very thankful for. Okay, let's go on. I'm having uh, trouble keeping up uh, with the time here. So let's go on to the next paragraph. The unity of the praying church is brought about by the Holy Spirit. Very important. Very important. It's not like we're all holding hands all over the globe. It doesn't We don't need that because we have the Holy Spirit already doing that for us. The same Spirit who is in Christ in the whole church and in each baptized person. Uh, this Spirit comes to help us in our weakness and expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. As the Spirit of the Son, He breathes into us the spirit of adopted sons and makes us cry out, Abba, Father. And there are the biblical quotes. Um, there can be no biblical, uh, biblical citations. There can be no Christian prayer without the action of the Holy Spirit. He unites the whole church and leads us through the Son to the Father. The community prayer of the community character of prayer. The example and command of the Lord and his apostles to persevere in continuous prayer are not to be considered a mere legal rule. Prayer expresses the very essence of the church as a community. What did I say earlier about worship and prayer being the essential duty of every Christian? 
when the community of the faithful is at first mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles, it is described as gathered together in prayer with several women, including the Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Acts 1.14 The whole group of believers was united heart and soul. Their common brotherhood was based upon the Word of God, prayer, and the Eucharist. The private prayer of the members of the Church is offered to the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit, and as such is always necessary and to be commended. Community prayer, however, has a special dignity, since Christ himself said, Where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with, us. I shall be there with them. Okay, so that ends section two. Now, just a quick summary. Uh, we already uh, verified through the text here that Jesus Christ is the one high priest, the one mediator between God and man, and how when we pray, he is united to us in his humanity, and he is united to the Father in his divinity. Okay, now that seems like a lot of mumbo-jumbo, really, but in concrete terms, what that means is that we, through baptism, become other Christs in and through him. We can't do it ourselves unless there is some hidden secret knowledge that I haven't been uh, enlightened about, uh, enlightened of. Uh, until then, I, I'm going to go with what the church teaches here, um, that we are united to Christ the head every time we pray. And what a better way to pray than to pray the very prayer book that he inspired and uh, prayed himself when he was incarnate which would be the book of Psalms and, of course, the scriptures. Um, now, the action of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is God, and he's part of the Holy Trinity. And the Holy Spirit has no uh, physical manifestation, unlike Christ. Um, and so, the Holy Spirit is Christ acting in and through the world, in and outside of time. He can do that through the, through the person of the Holy Spirit. It's a phenomenon that happens only through God and can only be fully understood by God. It's a very wonderful thing. So you see, Christian prayer is not like uh, Buddhist meditation or some kind of um, centering prayer uh, or mindful, mindfulness meditation. Um, this is a divine act, and the best way to benefit from it is to stay, try to keep your heart clean. Very difficult very difficult but it's well worth it because the more we try to keep our minds and hearts clean according to the commandments or better yet the utterances of God um, the more we will the Holy Spirit will be able to um, the more we'll be able to recognize the Holy Spirit's work and I really don't know how to explain that all I know is that when you pray especially in the liturgy of the hours you'll feel fulfilled you'll feel content no matter what your circumstances are. You could be uh, three days away from having your home repossessed and being put out on the streets, but you'll feel like a king in a castle. That's all I can say. It's a wonderful feeling, and it's proof of God's love for us, no matter our circumstances, no matter what we have done, as long as our hearts are directed to Him. Okay? Uh, so please take that and, and digest it uh, with a prayerful heart and uh, mind and um, uh, the last thing I want to say is about the importance of community I I'm kind of a loner myself I'm married with kids but aside from my wife and kids and uh, the small circle of friends that I have um, I don't have much of a, a very active social life um, and I do that on purpose because I like to spend my time studying uh, the word and uh, that kind of thing so that's my wife sending me a message uh, speaking of my beloved wife uh, okay so there she goes again all right I should probably get going to now but uh, basically what it's saying is exactly what Jesus said that when two or three are gathered in his name there he is in the midst of them he's he's even just as present when you're um, by yourself in a group of people uh, who have the same spirit of Christ and who want to pray to him uh, with you it's a powerful experience it's a very unifying experience it shows that we are created for uh, community, whether it's um, us being in each other's presence or us being united invisibly 
uh, through the Holy Spirit all around the world. Because I can't see you, I, mean, I can't be with you, you can't be with me, but if you are believing in all of this, then we are united um, supernaturally through the Holy Spirit. All right? I have to go. So God bless. Please pray for me. Please pray for this channel and that it bears much fruit for the, for the kingdom of God. May the blood of Christ be upon us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.